edge a tree correctly and why you choose the size of the ring that you're going to choose for edging it. I'm also going to show you how to stake the trees correctly, especially with trees that are substantially um, wide, so they need good support. Okay? It's not, I know ringing the tree means to take the bark off it, but what I mean is putting an edge around the bottom of the tree. Um, sometimes you can use it for decorative purposes, you can use it as um, for bark motion to tidy up the tree so you don't end up mowing or strimming any close to your trees. But there's another reason you would use it, and it's because you want to get as much water in around where all the fibrous roots would be on your tree. So the main idea is. You don't have, in, not close to the trunk of the tree, you don't have any fibrous roots. There might be a very, very small amount in close. All that's in here is anchor roots. The anchor roots start here and then they go out. And the further out they go, the more fibrous roots are. So when you look at the canopy of a tree, so say the canopy is, in this case, about four feet wide. So I want to come a line straight down from the canopy. And just step back in a small bit from that. Because that's what the tree does, it filters down all the water to this area because this is where its root zones are. This is where all the fibrous roots are in these zones here. So what we're going to do is we're going to use, this is a little device we just made for um, helping us to mark the ring. So it's literally just a piece of wagon pipe, just slips around the tree like that, it's in, that's it, and then we can go in any direction and we can mark it. It keeps it nice and even. So you can do this in two ways if you want. You can tie a knot in it, a little small slip knot, pull it through and keep it at that. You can use the knot, you can tie lots of knots in it so you have different sizes or whatever. Or you can just take a sharpie or any permanent marker or whatever it is and just put a mark on it and use that as your guide. And that's what I'm going to use right now. Okay, so that's roughly my circle or that's the radius of my circle. So what I'm going to use to mark it is just a bit of peat. That's my mark. So I'm just going to follow the mark right around with a bit of peat, keeping it the same all the way. That's it. You can finalize it at the very, very end with your edger or your spade. So we're just going to mark it all the way around so we know where to be. As you can see, straight away it's a circle without having to try, without having to do much. It's just very simple. It's like a compass built onto your tree. And that's it. There's the circle we're gonna mark. We have our rough shape. Now here's, exact, here's an exact example of what I mean. No fibrous roots along one of the anchor roots. No fibrous roots are out at the very, very edge. Okay. okay. So, love to tidy that up. Take this off. Get clear back into the center. Now some people might think that that's deep enough around the edges, but it's not. I'll show you. What I'm going to do is go along with my edger and finalize my shape as well. It gives me. I'm going the full 
depth of the edger. And that's probably five to six inches there, which is perfect. is so that we can have two inches of bark mulch and still have two inches of an edge so it's very easy for us to edge so what will happen is the grass the edge will be down here and the grass will hang over so it'll be easier for us to trim it and cut it okay but before I put in the bark mulch we're gonna stake it so it's just to get a bar now this is just, it's not a crowbar, it's just a bar that happens to be here, you can use a rebar, you can use whatever, it doesn't matter if you have a sledge or if you have a crowbar, excellent. So just make a cross in it and then go round in a circle, okay, and that's it, so put that in, just pop it on it, tickle it a few times with the sledge, if you want to be particular about it you can check using a level as you're going with it that's not too bad the further down you go the harder it is to keep it straight okay so that's not bad again another little trick you can do if there's any kind of play in it just use the back of the sledge just gently tap it on the one side of it that is it so yeah I'm gonna repeat the one the other one okay Cross rail. Now, as you can see, I lined up my posts with the actual trunk of the tree itself. Um, normally, I would be using a different material to actually tie the tree. I wouldn't be using these. These are kind of used for this, but they can be used on these. I'll show you how to use them. But um, what you need to do now is put in your cross rail. So I'm just going to roughly mark where my cross rail centers are because the wood I'm using here actually that old wood and I'm afraid it'll split as soon as you go to use it at all. Right so what I'm going to do is I'm going to pre-drill on this one. Now I use a drill mainly or a gas gun. I know not everybody has these tools and um, I'm going to show you um, nailing it by hand and uh, screws. I'll tell you why I'm using the screws more so. So all I'm doing is pre-drilling so it doesn't split. I'm actually going to pre-drill for the nails just on this one. It will be the same, you'll see what I mean. Okay, so that's that in it. So what I'll do is just twist in. The screws are going to be on one side and I'm going to have nails on the other side. So the advantage of using screws is that when you're hammering in the nails, Post doesn't shake when you're doing it. Okay, so I'm going to show you first. I'm going to put in one screw first. Now, the height doesn't really matter. What you can do is whatever the width is and keep it perfect square. So I could say that's roughly my, my height, so I need to be up to about here and then just level it off at that. That's not bad. Two posts are going to hold it perfectly steady. So we'll pop one in first. Okay, so we're just going to level it. You don't have to level it, you can level it by eye if you want. It doesn't matter. Up, down, it doesn't matter. Nobody cares. You'll care though. So I'm going to do this for is because I want a little mark here. Because if I'm going to use a hammer, I just need a guide. That's it. And holding the sledge directly behind it, it absorbs most of the impact. Okay, so now that you've got your rail on, just cut the tops off before you start on putting in your straps and stuff. Now you can cut them anywhere you want. It doesn't it doesn't really matter where you put it. Some people go flush off, but remember you have to keep a bit of an angle. You do not want water sitting on a flat surface on your posts. They'll just rot a lot faster. So my advice is to come up about an inch and then just put a little snake on it. I put a small little slope on it. 
Okay? So now that's neat and tidy, and by doing the slope up an inch meant there was no chance of me hitting my screws or my nails in doing so. Very same is true on the end. Just go flush with your post. Normally you would use a different type of strap, but again I'm just using what I have and um, if you have the other straps you can use them or you can use these ones. These ones are pretty common, almost anybody can get their hands on this one. But just remember when you're putting this one on, just to keep the grooves towards the tree and not this way around. Um, the idea is that the rain water and the air and stuff you get in when it's around the tree, okay? So I'm just going to pop it around. And tighten it up as much as you can, then just lower it down to where you want, and that's roughly in the center of it. So, the problem is, there is a hole, there's holes on this side, this side, the way you would normally nail it into um, a post. So, and there's none on this side, so what I do is put a nail on this side first. I just wanted to use some small little cloud nails. Again, I'm just using my hand, it's a little small um, head of nail. So I'll just put it in. And if you're not comfortable holding it, you can use the pliers. And just hold it with the pliers and just tap it in. Careful not to smack the tree if you can. And again, if you get it in and you don't want it bouncing around and you're moving too much. Put your sledge at the back of it and tap it. Okay, that's that one in. So all we're going to do is just hold it, hold it there. Now I'm just going to lean up against it while I start it, and then just tap it in. And that's it. You then keep your stuff to and knife. Trim off, and that's it. A secure tree that is perfect. Wind to come won't make any difference to it. Last thing we can do is put a bit of back mulch on it. So just quickly go around, trying to even up all the clay. Let's see if it'll move. Anything that's not meant to be in there. That's it. Just so cool off your bag. In. Now, as I said earlier, we're looking for two inches of coverage at least. Well, far does now. Some people might fix it. I don't mind fix it. I don't believe in it at all. It's just a great way of preventing weeds from ever coming out of the ground once they get in. Um, but this is perfect. So, what the bark will do to trees is it will retain its feet and moisture in around the root zones of the tree. Yeah, so it just needs a little small bit more there. Now, that's a really nice heavy coat of bright mulch on it. And this is what I was saying earlier on. I now still have an edge that I can come out of with my edge or with my strimmers or whatever I want to keep this circle nice. Um, for anyone who's interested, a circle that size, which is probably about three feet. Um, this is a 60 litre bag, so I'm assuming you'll definitely get two trees of this size out of one of those bags. Okay, I hope all this helps.